It's Sunday morning, and I know it's going to be echoing here, so it's Sunday morning and um, I've come a little bit earlier than I need to because it's raining and it's cold, I wanted to come in and put the heaters on and just set up before everyone arrives, um, although it's quite quiet class this morning actually, probably because it's cold and rainy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to make it really cosy, the blankets out. <laughs> second story in Welsh Tales of Terror last night in bed. That was called, hang on, edited by R. Chetwind Hayes, and that's called um, A Cry of Children by John Christopher. So John Christopher's kind of, is, it, is that a sort of quite well-known sci-fi author? This was okay. I didn't love it. It was about a, a doctor that was um, just having a kind of, he needed a bit of a break. So he said he would go and cover this country doctor in this kind of out of the way little Welsh town called Bryn Capel. Would that be a real name? I mean, potentially. Potentially. The, the hill um, with the chapel. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, you know, like it's an old mining town. It's going sort of into disrepair. So that's some pretty nice sort of descriptions of going to stay in this kind of like creepy little doctor's house. Um, and then he goes in, um, what, someone dies so a local writer dies, and then there's a big secret about why he's hearing uh, children's crying when he goes and stays there overnight. I, it was all right. I, I didn't love this one, but I mean, it was it was kind of had a kind of nice gothic atmosphere, and I liked the small Welsh sort of town, mining town kind of atmosphere. Um, I thought I'd also just do a little update on because uh, I've got a few books on the go at the moment, so I can show you those. Right. So um, I'm hoping to finish these all quite soon. Um, I've still got um, of Mud and Flame, the Pender's Fe, uh, Pender's Fen source book, um, edited by Matthew Hall and James Mackin. Um, this is absolutely brilliant. I, I know it's a bit niche if you're not, a, you know, like into Pender's Fen. You have to be really into it. I would it? say, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's for like definitely fans of that whole kind of seventies. Um, kind of creepy, that hauntology, um, 70s creepy kids TV, um, play for today type stuff. You know, if you're into that kind of stuff, then this is definitely really good. There's also loads of stuff about like um, folklore and, you know, sort of deep history and stuff like that. But just essays by different people relating to the film Pender's Fan. Really great. It's it'll probably made my top 10 at the end of the year. Um, I don't have a huge amount left of this one. So I know a lot of you have sort of been huge fans and rightfully re recommended that I do get to it and this is um, A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurakir but it's in praise of black performance. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I started it but um, I'm loving it and it's got some 
some essays that I would sort of class as like, you know, like if, if any essay writer should be reading some of this stuff. I think there's one, um, so there's one called 16 Ways of Looking at Blackface, which is just like, just such a masterly essay. So good. Um, but there's stuff about, you know, Josephine Baker, Whitney Houston, Beyonce. Um, I've just read uh, the essay on the uh, the woman that sang back back up in on uh, Gimme Shelter, the Rolling Stones. Uh, Mary Clayton. Right, so Mary Clayton. Um, so if you know the song Gimme Shelter, she kind of makes that track. Um, and her, like, there's a bit where she's singing, like, murder and her voice cracks. Um, and it's just kind of amazing. And um, what you can do is, uh, we'll, we'll link below. Okay. There's a... Um, like a audio of just her vocal on that bit that you can listen to on YouTube and you can hear Mick Jagger in the background going, yeah, when you go anyway. <laughs> um, it's just like this amazing moment. She was pregnant um, when she recorded that and I think she was like a second choice, like the person they wanted couldn't come in. She just like came in, knocked out of the park, one of the greatest like vocals of all time. And, you know, like a lot of backing singers has just kind of got, uh, gone kind of, um, you know, un credited or unknown well not uncredited but you know she's been forgotten about and she deserved better uh, so it's stuff about stuff like that it's just fascinating really good stuff and stuff about dancing and like um, dance marathons and the history of that so good um, like oh yeah you'd yeah. love it um, I'm still plowing through the August Kleinzala sleeping it off in Rapid City new and selected poems um, I do love these Faber um, collections. I think they're beautiful. I'm not a massive fan of kind of selected poems. Like I prefer original collections, but poetry, like more than any other genre, just goes out of print so quickly that it's hard to find um, actual collections by older poets. Which is, I think, like you know, I think you know, culturally, like in the UK, we need to like be better at that. I think we need to sort of celebrate our old poets more and like keep those collections in print like we do with novels. I have also given this one a start, The Best of Bedab Bedabbled. This is British horror and cult cinema, which I think I got as a Christmas present last year. Um, and it's just like, so it's, it's, um, it's bit essays from uh, Folk Horror Magazine. Um, and uh, I'm not really a fan of the writing. I think it's a little bit misogynistic, and I think it's probably about 10 years old, a lot of these articles. But it does have an article on um, Mummy nan Nanny, uh, Mumsy Nanny, Sunny and Girly, one of my all-time favourite films. So it's got, like, a bit of a, an essay on that, uh, which is kind of, you know, like, you don't really sort of see much about that anywhere. So um, I learned from that there is a novelization. Oh, is there? Yeah, that of that. It's really hard to find. So, but it's out there, so I know in my mind now to for the rest of my life to keep looking. Um, and that's that. I have a question for you. Yeah. If you were happy to answer it. Yeah. Well, where was it? Was it on day one or day two? You might know the question I'm talking about. Sinuses still Houses have sinuses. that sort of back drip. You know, yeah. they um like... So I don't know if this is specific to me, but as a child, my brother used to get really annoyed when I made a certain noise. I won't recreate it for you because it's gross. But um, I don't think it's gross, but my brother did, so you might. Um, <laughs> and I do it occasionally around the house, often when I think I'm not being overheard. But um, it's that when you get when you're trying to clear out the back and you're I kind of that that kind of, sort of like a like a clock, like a no it? like a TikTok sort of noise. Yeah. What's the question anyway? I can't find the question now, oh, okay. but it was, someone did comment about how you worked so much. Oh yeah, to address the, um, <laughs> thank you for noticing, um, to address this, chance not stop going on about this, I, 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 I've been told to say I don't work very much, but thank you. Um, You've not been told. Uh, yeah, Shant. Shant just, works much harder than I do, uh, I, funny. because I'm probably ADHD, really struggle with the workplace. So I, I've created a life where I have like really short bursts of work where I do my lollipop in, I do my cleaning and I do my sort of shop cover. Um, so, but thank you. Um, I do get fatigued very easily. Um, so yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a very poor Christmas as a result of not poor, I mean, it's a good Christmas, but poor financially Christmas because I just haven't 
I haven't been working enough. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, thank oh, you, I thank didn't you mean for... we have to answer yeah. it actually seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I, I work very hard. Thanks, Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Um, the books we're going to read for um, this month. I'm just going to say I've got um, In the Middle of Feminine Macabre, Volume 2. I'm In the Middle of New World Witchery uh, by Corey Thomas Hutchison, which is like a book of folklore. I'm currently reading Paul Oster. Got a couple of novels, library books that they might give a go. So, Death Valley by Melissa Broder, Big Swiss, Jen, Be Jen Began. And then I've got this one, which is like a memoir, I think. It's like spiritual, kind of yoga y, spiritually. Nature Writing Spiritual Growth, which is Mirrors in the Earth by Asia Sula or Asia Sula. Um, I think Bert follows her on Instagram and then told me about her and then I like the look of this book so I got this book. I've got more to come. Yeah, I've had my eye on this one um, for a while, which is a, a reissue. It's a reef for the enemy by Pamela Frankel. Is it festive? Uh, no. No, not no. a Christmas wreath for the enemy? At all, the wreath, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, no. I think it's in the summer. Um, but I... Did I, show, I don't know if I showed you, but I recently did, picked I up a, like a second-hand yeah. uh, 50s edition of another book by Pamela Franco. It sort of revived my interest in reading this one. So, yeah. Um, 1950s, 1954. Um, about a precocious daughter holidaying on the French Riviera. So there's, that one's kind of been um, something I need to get to. I'm in quite a Patricia Highsmith mood. I do mm -hmm. have this one, The Cry of the Owl. This is the one that um, uh, draws on Highsmith's own experience of being a stalker. Oh, nice, on the back. nice. So, Didn't you have Carol you were going to read? I do. Oh, yeah. yeah? I, I, put, I took out Carol as well. Yeah. Because um, that's quite wintry, isn't it? It's um, Carol season, as they yeah. say, So isn't maybe it? I'm just in a Patricia Highsmith mood. Yeah. So there's that one. And I've just seen... Um, these Harold Robbins, I've got a couple of Harold Robbins when I went back to uh, visit my mum recently, or earlier this year, um, and this was the one that he was reading for, like, he said that was the 18th time. Um, I love that. Yeah, so, and he just let me have it. Uh, so you didn't even pay for this one? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's sort of glitzy, 80s glamour and um, trash. I haven't written any Harold Robbins. Yeah, I haven't either. Uh, from the glamorous Hollywood jet set to the drug trafficking crooks of the Peruvian Amazon, from the murderous New York hoods to the so-called men of honour in Sicily, they're all hungry for enormous wealth and influence and they live by their own rules. They too are the piranhas. What? The piranhas. Um, I'm going to have a look through here. Yes. with myself that I still haven't read the Tegan and Sarah book. Oh yeah, I'm surprised. Come on, let's just do it. I kept saying I had to read it this year. Let's do that one. I, um, I definitely wanted to read Go um, Season of the Witch, the book about the book of Goth. Hmm. 
What about spraying worms and gathering I wanted to read as well. Oh, and then I do have... This is just too many books, isn't it? Yeah, it's get lots out, isn't it? I was thinking of reading Reformatory. I could put that on the pile. Mm. Any thoughts? I feel a bit overwhelmed. Well, it's just whatever you're in the mood for, isn't it, really? Don't be overwhelmed. Just think of it as fun, isn't it? Oh, think of it as fun. So, this one... This might be nice about now, mightn't it? Mm. Kind of uh, um, the newer sites of how we navigate. It does sound good. Yeah, dark and magical places. Yeah. And then shall I quickly spin this round and if there's anything on here? Cronenberg. Oh, Cronenberg? Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Cronenberg? I don't know. No. It's going to be um, a horror mood. I kind of wanted maybe. Can you see that now? Maybe. I haven't done the Vigitus Fjord yet. I don't no, know. No, I don't, I'm not feeling no. that right now, though. Pony Boy. No. no. I'm not feeling that. What about this one we just looked at? Oh, maybe. Maybe. The other side. Yeah. Put that there. I mean, that's, that's, that's good, enough, isn't it? That's isn't good. It? Yeah. Oh, and let's let's finish off with the Kathy Acker. Blood and Guts in High oh, School. Oh, yeah, 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 read yeah, that. yeah. I read that one. Shall I show you what I've picked? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've got a stack. Uh, oh, yeah. I got so rid of a few uh, things. There was two from you found for me as well, yeah. wasn't it? Sorry, that was the... Ghost book, Natural History of Ghosts, and then also this Robin Hobb. Yeah, I thought that's a nice uh, yeah. sort of December-y, winter-y sort of read, maybe. And I do have The Wheel of Time by my bed Wheel as of Time. well. I think we're going to re start re-watching The Wheel of Time, or carry on watching The Wheel of Time I think series. there was a few doubters like, when I mentioned Wheel of Time last time, that if I could yeah. read it. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and I've not really met anyone that's really loved the series either. Uh, like, um, the books, you mean? No, the, the, the TV. TV. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, I, we loved it. So. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so I've put um, a nice sort of winter chiller on there, which is the one I bought the other day, Voices in an Empty Room. Uh, Lulu is a medium in, in this one, is it? so it's an unusual psychic thriller. Uh, yeah, Sean reminded me I haven't read Get Carter yet. Ted Lewis, the greatest writer of all time. So I'm going to read that. I've got an urge for Young Adam um, by Trocky. <laughs> Alexander Trocky. I think I've read this, but probably in my 20s. Do you remember these um, Rebel Inc.? I do. Class, they, were they were the so coolest. Cool. <laughs> yeah. They had like, all the sort of, uh, you know. Men. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah, all the, uh, um, what's the word? Pete's? They no, had no. Um, transgressive kind of yeah. fiction. Um, I think was it based in Scotland? Oh, okay. I remember they had like Ask the Dust on there. I remember buying yeah. that one. Yeah, Fante. Yeah. Uh, Never read it. This is great. Um, do you remember the film as well? With Ewan McGregor? And, oh. Um, that was good. I've got a jazz novel. Um, Night Song by John Williams. Which is beautiful, and it's part of this series, the Jazz Book Club, which were mostly non-fiction books you could get, and I think these are from the 50s. Uh, this is 1961. Uh, this Jazz Book Club edition was produced in 1964 for sales to its members only. They've got quite a few from this club in um, Troutmark. Oh, do you think this yeah. looks like a job lot from somewhere? I think, yeah, maybe? I think so, but um, this is a novel, so I kind of was kind of interested in that. A lot of them are kind of memoirs and things like that. Just a little, because it's small, and I can't see him, it's crime, a crime novel, The Crime of the Century, introduced by the author. Um, first like book King publication. King. You like Kingsley Amis, don't you? I'm a, I'm a fan of Kingsley Amis. I'm not going to apologise for that. I think he's a, <laughs> a bit of a knob. Um, I don't know, there's, um, do you watch Who Done It? The... <laughs> Everyone's no, watching no. it at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's a big thing. Uh, the seventies uh, crime show. Where, go, what's you? Who done it? There's a. Um, to link one. We'll link it. There's a ho there's a whole playlist on YouTube. Um, I did. I've got a DVD as well. Um, where they do a, a re an act. They they do a sort of kind of a TV play, and then you have to work out who is the killer, based on clues. Um, and they have like a guest audience. No, like um. Guest panel. Guest panel. And um, King's Lamus is occasionally on that, um, and he's very smug. Yeah. Um, George Simenon, Betty. I was obsessed with George Simenon for years. I read everything I could find, and then for some reason, the last couple of years, I've had a bit of a, a lull in reading Simenon, but I've not stopped buying them. So I've just got loads to read, so this looks good. Betty, 
Do you remember I got Samuel Beckett, Murphy? I do remember that. Another sort of, so I'm reading the Marjorie Allingham, Smoky, Foggy, London. Um, I think this is going to be kind of same, um, but, you know, darker and more um, bleak. Lovely. Yeah. Unique, isn't it? I think so. We recently, this has recently just come out, um, Closer by Dennis Cooper, and we picked this up from Shelf Life. Um, I haven't read any Dennis Cooper and I really I want to, I've always wanted to read The Sluts yeah. and um, this is reviewed by William Burroughs and Edmund White and Kathy Acker. So uh, The Sluts is always like a little bit expensive I feel. It's yeah. not out in the UK I think is so they're all like is? imports yeah. so this is the first one actually I think that's yes. published in the UK. So that's on Serpent's Tale. It's on Serpent's it? Tale and they're sort of you know they're canon I think modern canon kind of ones. Short stories by James Kelman he's a Scottish author that I um, have another book by called a disaffection i think um this is, we picked this one up from the um bookshop by the sea is that oh called? okay i got the, in Aberystwyth. yeah this is one from um, that's my one from bookshop from the sea yeah by the sea as well so yeah um we'll link them because they've got a really lovely instagram and tiktok i have yeah yeah it's just short stories so that, that sounds good i did find carol patricia highsmith so i've got two patricia highsmiths potentially this is sean's book which she didn't enjoy well she started reading it and wasn't enjoying but um, I think it kind of fits into my some of my interests maybe a bit more. Okay. Also maybe fits into that sort of me listening to sort of Scarred for Life and reading Pender's Fan and that kind of like 70s childhood um, stuff. Um, stuff about The Wicker Man, um, children, 70s children's television, M.R. James, Charles Dickens. Um, yeah, it's a uh, journey around the ancient stones, stark shores and folkloric woodlands of Britain's spectred isle. So... It's quite thick, but I think that sounds really good. And then finally, I've been saying I'm going to read to Mark Hyatt, the love leader. This is um, a real issue that came out this year. Um, I'm really eager to try Mark Hyatt. I've got his poetry book as well. This is like, I so, get my pile. It's like a wild pile now we've got, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, this is for someone that reads maybe three books a month. <laughs> so, we'll see. Look at, this isn't even all of the ones I picked. They can't read all them. No, and those are big books as well. But, yeah, yeah. we'll see. Lovely. Um, nice I to like... have a stack, though, isn't it, I oh, think? Oh, yeah. They, if anyone's read any of them, they could let us know which ones Yeah, yeah. I think we should read. But it's all, I think it sort of helps you, like, just pinpoint what mood you're in, Yeah. isn't it? So. Yeah. I quite like this angle because it's a bit like um, that the people watching are tiny. That's like, true, actually like we're dolls. talking to little, little ones. <laughs> Yeah, to make you feel small. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Are you filming? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm. Is Doug Benedict? Mm. Um, I'm Happy watching. Of course, so bad. <laughs> uh, this is 1978 Cruise into Terror. Um, I I love a cruise film. Um, it's a 70s TV movie, I think. They're on a cruise, um, but they're carrying some kind of evil, ancient Eve, evil Egyptian statue or something. It's causing it's a disruption on the, on the ship. Uh, very good. I watched. Um, hang on a second. I watched um, Crossplot uh, this morning. I'm just watching films today. It's been nice. Uh, a Crossplot. Um, Roger Moore. I think it's 1969. That was great. It was very swinging. Um, and it was kind of so. It was like his uh, kind of in between the Saint and James Bond, kind of, and uh, and and better than both. I thought like, he was like a an ad exec, um, who gets roped into some, you know, plot assassination plot. It was great. Sort of London swinging sixties protests, beatnik parties, um, lots of chases and glamour. So. That was really good. Um, uh, I think after this, I might watch uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Mm. It's about three. And we're going to have like a late dinner, late lunch, early dinner. Lunar. Um, we've got jacket potatoes, cheese, beans, sausages. I'll show you.
sausage. So it's a bit of a kid's dinner. Um, but there it is. <laughs> These are the Linda McCartney kind of um, rosemary and caramelised onion sausages. Big fan. Okay. I'm going to have this one. So this is matcha vanilla. I'm going to have it with matcha vanilla latte. Um, we've got some oat milk. <laughs> Um, so, we haven't tried this one, the anim animal, apple cinnamon, because Bert doesn't want that one, so I'll try that another time. But we last night we had the chocolate mint, which is delicious, and we've also tried this lavender caramel, which is also delicious. And let me show you the colour of this one. Oh, you can't really see. Actually, it doesn't look... It looks sort of dusky pink there, but it was really bright pink when you added the um the milk and stuff so yeah we're gonna have this one oh super green Vanilla matcha. Mm, yummy. Yeah, I'm gonna let it cool down because it might like burn easy. Mm. Just fragile. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna we're gonna have the, this, and I'm watching a film about uh, a, a chef uh, looking for a recipe of gingerbread cookies for Christmas. Great. Uh, so it's not Beverly Hills Cup too. No, we'll maybe save that for another time. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> the end of today really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah it's a lot of book content today lots of book content is yeah. that nice for the you bookish people yeah yeah i'm really happy with my my stack it makes me feel like i know where i am now i know what i'm doing it makes me sort of want to read a little bit more as well so that's good isn't it? yeah it's very good um any questions oh what about a little emoji i like those oh yeah christmas, something christmasy christmas tree mm. please or any tree if you can't mm. buy a christmas oh, tree yeah yeah see yeah. you tomorrow see you tomorrow bye, bye.